Hello and welcome to Sport Tonight. I'm Cecilia Mogbe in Lagos. What a greetings to you wherever you are in the world watching us in London. I'm Austin Okonakpan, Cecilia. So much going on in our world of sports in English Premier League. There's a game between Manchester City and Brentford going on at the moment. And Super Eagles, midfield that Franco Yeka is on the starting list for Brentford. Already Nations, Nations Cup is over and the teams are back to their club. Uh, you know, Simon Adingra actually scored two goals for Brighton on Sunday at the weekend, continuing from where he stopped at the Africa Cup of Nations. Champion stuff, you will see. All right, this is what the show looks like tonight. We'll be talking about the Super Falcons of Nigeria. Yes, Randy Wardrum, he's back in the squad after missing out the four games that the Super Falcons yeah. play. So he's back to continue in the Olympic qualifiers, Nigeria seeking a ticket to the Olympics for the first time in 16 years. 2012, Nigeria, we're not there. 2016, no. And of course, Tokyo, none. So right now, it's going to be in Paris. And that is what Randy Wardrum is seeking qualification for. We'll talk about that on the program. And also, touch down on Nigeria Premier Football League, the games that went on at the weekend. And also, talk about NWFL. Yes, Circumstanza is back, came back uh, last week. So this week, we're dwelling on March day 9. And as Austin mentioned, games going on around England and, of course, across Europe. The UEFA Champions League is also packed in Milan in action. We'll be giving you updates on that. So much more to talk about. And, of course, yes, table tennis is on the menu tonight. Table tennis. Why? Because the ITTF World Team Championship is still on. Nigeria out. South Africa out. Algeria out. Of course, Egypt, the men are out, but the women are still there because they are into the second round. But Nigeria exited at the group stage after the first round simply because we're not Aaron or Kodri because that's what we keep saying when you have a big top player and he's not playing in a major tournament it's always a problem we're not alone on the show tonight of course Kenny Idris is back from well Cote d'Ivoire he was right there when the uh, Super Eagles won the gold and silver and he's here with us in the studio <laughs> 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 yes, golden, golden, silver. Um, at least it has adjusted from golden bronze. Yes, <laughs> it's good to be back in the mix, and uh, it was an amazing tournament. Uh, but we're back uh, to the grind. And then uh, in the menu you just read out, uh, I think um, table tennis really caught my fancy because the moment we heard the announcement of Arno Kodri will not be part of this competition because of food poisoning and all of that, we started to panic. Uh, why or when will we get to that point where, you know, there is just another person. I'm not saying Aaron Okodri <laughs> cannot be the biggest thing, yeah. but there is another person that can give us comfort that, okay, since this person or this person is still there, yeah. then we can do a whole lot. But our reality is what we will face, and this is our reality. Right, Austin, so let's talk a table tennis. That's what we're starting with on tonight's show. Yes, the ITCF World Championship, where Nigeria was going for that. Even the first game against Japan was a walkover uh, because they didn't arrive on time. You know, Nigerian <laughs> thing happened to the team. And of course, after that, against Madagascar, they couldn't do anything. Chinese Japan, they couldn't do anything. And so that's the reason they exited at the group stage. And of course, you know, Shago Tirela was actually drafted to salvage to be a coach, I mean, he was drafted to be, uh, I mean, acting coach for both sides. <laughs> Who does that? Yes, that's what table tennis is currently going through in Nigeria at the moment. That's the disappointing story of table tennis in Nigeria. And this is a sport that has given Nigeria so much uh, international representation, so much glory. Aaron Quadri is currently ranked 12th in the world. Adam of Young has has given, you know, international glory to this country through table tennis. Olajide Omotai has represented Nigeria internationally. You know, so you, you'd expect that at this stage when we come to talk about table tennis, I think in the last 10 years, Cecilia, this has been the story of table tennis. Uh, funding issues, um, the leadership not taking responsibility to ensure that are things that are done the right time and, and players get to championships the right, you know, when when expected. It's it's sad. I started following the, the young lady on, uh, on your screen, Esther Ribamiche, when she was just about eight. And at that time, I did a report that she can go on to be a world champion with the right support, with the right, you know, envi environment. It hasn't happened. Same with this guy. Uh, Omotai Olajide, he has all of the qualities. At one point, he has beaten Aaron Okwari in the final game. Same with Bodea Biodun. So, yes, Aaron Okwari is more of an international table tennis player than them and is 
a lot better. But with sports where anything can happen, these guys have shown that if they can beat out a quarter at one point in their career, then they've got quality. But with the World Team Table Tennis Championship, you mentioned how they prepared, how they came into the competition. You know, they were to play uh, Chinese Taipei, Japan. Uh, Madagascar, <laughs> and Czech Republic, you know. And after that walkover against Japan, I, I just said, look, this is it. Unfortunately, Aaron Accord isn't here to give us all the pomp and jibes, you know, and, and the media mentions that would have gotten. But as I said about these other players who represent the country, they are top class in their own yeah. right. Mm -hmm. But again, administration, again, the biggest elephant in the room, crumbling other sports in Nigeria, uh, funding seems to, you know, um, how do I explain yeah. it, frustrate the efforts yeah. of these table tennis players. Because I know that they speak to me and sometimes they cry, you know, they cry when they're ready and like, oh, can you imagine? We don't even know mm -hmm. if we're going to to go to the competition because of funding. I'm not talking about the younger players. Though. I'm not talking about Ome or Augustine Emmanuel. I'm talking the top class, the guys who are the senior level going through this sort of humiliation. How do you want to, want to go to a competition and impress? Go and find out how Egypt prepares their country for table tennis. Then you understand why they are still the only African team left at the competition. We hope that this sort of stories yeah. will change. When the Minister of Sports Development came on board, we had him on the show. And I asked him, I said, are you going to be another football minister? He said, no. I think that's not the case today. All right. Uh, well, it, it wasn't a good outing for Team Nigeria. And that's why one of the players, you know, was there. Uh, she's talking about the fact that the poor outing, uh, yes, they were happy that they even went for the tournament. Sometimes they don't even get to attend some of those events. So sponsorship is key for the Table Tennis Federation to be able to sponsor players for events like this and for them to also prepare well and attend the tournament. I'm talking about Edem Ofiong. Let's listen to her. It's another opportunity to showcase our talent and also this time as um, a training tool for the All African Games. I'm very glad that the Nigerian Foundation uh, did their best to send us here because I think it's another way of preparing us for the World Championship. We've been a lot, even though we didn't have enough time to rest due to the time difference, but I think it's a good thing that we came here. I'm not disappointed because um, like I played very well. Uh, let me just say that I wasn't lucky enough because the first set I started very well. I had 2-0 that one, I lost. And the second match, almost the same thing. I won the first game and I had 10-6 and 10-7. I don't know what went wrong. I did very well. I was a little bit disappointed, but... And then again, you know, table tennis, you can't predict it. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, and you can end up losing matches that you, lose. you won't even believe. Exactly what happened with me. So, I think I did my best. I think we need a lot of sponsors. I know that the Federation can do this on their own. But we need some private sectors to join and join force to push these young players because as a stand, I don't think we'll be able to play a lot of tournaments because now it's very difficult to even compete in community. I'm not even talking about other African tournaments and due to the fact that everything is just rising and all of that. So, all we need now is sponsorship, not just from the um, ministry, from other private sectors to help boost um, the game and also help Federation to grow these young players. So why dangling money on the Super Eagles of Nigeria? Also remember, there's some players who also need this sponsorship. You can actually you know, share the largest to some of these guys. Now, Nigeria, why the men were in the group that I also mentioned earlier, Chinese Top in Madagascar, and of course, you also have Japan, which was the walkover. The women were grouped alongside Germany, Mexico, Slovakia, and Poland, and they lost all their games, three all. And then they were bottom of that group, and that's why they couldn't get into the second round. Or like Egypt, who uh, had a better, I'm talking about the Egyptian women, because the men are also out, just like you have Algeria out, South Africa out, but the men are also out, but the women were the ones who finished second in the group and qualify to the second round. Let's go for a short break, and we'll come back, of course. We'll listen to the acting coach of the team and some of the reasons why they failed to impress. Well, uh, the African performance this tournament is not so impressed. Uh, a little bit disappointed because I'm expecting African nations going to 
moving more forward, but unfortunately their performance is not so it's not so encouraging. I think the problem we have uh, uh, the, the I think the lack of uh, preparation before the tournament. You know, most of the country they prepare very well before this tournament, but uh, African nations they, they did not prepare very well before before they came down here in, in Busa. All the female players we have in Nigeria, the problem we have, the, the style they are playing is old style. You know, they are still playing table tennis, uh, uh, 70s table tennis, 80 table tennis, and table tennis in the 70s, 80s, is 90s is very 100% different to now in 2003. So the problem is the style, the style they are playing. That's, that's why they are not improving, because they are still playing the style of defensive pushing the ball on the table and try to defend always. You know, in table tennis, you can't defend. It's not possible for you to always defend. Even the defender that they are defending, they are always, they defend and they attack. Uh, table tennis is just like, a, let me give you a quick example, just like a boxing. In boxing, you cannot win a fight in the boxing ring and defend. No, you need to attack. That's the same. That's the, it's the same. You know, the difference is we, we, we have table and then they have ring. So, so that's why we, our Nigerian table tennis female are not are not improving because the style they are playing, the style the coaches they are coaching them is the whole style in the seventy style. So so we need to change. We need to let them understand that this kind of playing is is not it's not going to work anymore in table tennis since this generation. Yes, coaching a major problem for Nigerians women. Why the Egyptian women, you know? Uh, into the second round of the tournament. They were grouped alongside France. That's the only game they lost. Lost to France, who topped their group. They also had Czech Republic, Ukraine, and Croatia. They defeated all these teams. They finished second. Yeah. Of course, they are not African champions for nothing. Um, Cecilia, let, let me take account from what Toriola just said. Coaching, uh, style of play. There is always dynamism. Yeah. Everything changes with time. With time. The mother of all sport, football. If you're still playing the way you're playing at the 80s, uh, yes, you can talk about the mathematical and all of that. You come back to how they are playing today, some of those players wouldn't have survived if they were still playing that way. <laughs> Look at the way the laws are changing, the rules of the game. You talk about basketball. A lot has changed from the time of the Jordans to what is happening now. Some years ago, we were talking about beach football where our beach soccer <coughs> players were training, practicing for a major tournament with the whole kind of ball. And there are new balls now. If you now go into the competition with the old, uh, you practice with the old ball, you will struggle with the new ball. You can remember 2010 World Cup, Jabulani, it had its own yeah. uniqueness. And this is what we're saying. How do we get it so wrong that we cannot be at par with today's practices, with how things are being done all around the world? If you're looking at um, the Chinese, the Japanese, hey, you're looking too far. Look at our African brothers and sisters. They are doing everything to get, uh, to close up the gap uh, when it comes to, you know, those who are doing it out there. If we cannot, you know, copy those who are far from us, what about those who are close? We can continue. See, Cecilia, there is yeah. one short thing. We have talent scattered everywhere. That is why we even get to qualify and be in some of this tournament. If we are not a country blessed with talent, we won't even get close. We would have been extinct from competitions like this. All you will hear is there are some tennis players, but will not be at, the, at this level. We're talking of Aaron Okodri, who is threatening the world. That we have super talent, but we all realize and know that talent <coughs> is never enough. You need to continue to polish technique. You polish it the moment it gets a little door. You polish it again to be at par with what is happening today. And that's the struggle. And then Imam F. Young also spoke of the second thing, which also borders around the first that I spoke about. Where is the sponsor? Welfareism, who is catering for these players every day. I say it and I'll say it again. Sportsmen and women in Nigeria do their part. They wake every day, yeah. go to it. If it's the gym, if it's the tracks, if it's the court, if it's the field, they go there and sweat out. They do everything they need to do. If they bring any new idea, they will get into the fold. Yeah. And, but 70% uh, of what you see yeah. on match day, whether it's on the court, in, on the table, 70% of that result had happened off, off those places we are watching. How well, they, how, how did they train? Where did they train? When did they train? With whom are they training? Yeah. These are questions that we lack answers for. And we'll continue to fall short. The only thing still sustaining us, like I said, is the fact that we have been blessed talent. with talents. All right.
Yeah, Austin, let's wrap this up and move to the Super Four Cons of Nigeria, of course, yeah. getting ready for the Olympics. You know, Cecilia, um, I just hope that this will change because it's pretty disappointing to the players and frustrating for sports analysts, you know, um, for, to talk about these sports. Um, yeah. I, I really wish to see these things change because, as I said, I've been covering table tennis in the last 10 years. And this is the ugly story that always comes out. When they win, they struggle to get back to the country. When they get to the country, they, they fight for allowance. So much, you know, disappointment coming out of table tennis. And that is one sport that has delivered. That is one sport that's got prospects. One sport that's got good players, good talent. Shevin Torial, I just mentioned now that the ladies are still playing the old style. It means coaching is also a, a problem. big problem, not just the players now. So the Federation has got a lot of work to do. Find a way to sit down with state associations and then take it to the federal level. I like your problems and find solutions to them so we can take table tennis to the next level. There's so much work to be done. Let's switch over to where not so much work needs to be done because the plethora of talents are everywhere. <laughs> Even without the head coach, they were winning matches. It tells you how good the Super Falcons can be when they are in the right frame of mind, when they, are, when they have that enabling environment to actually excel. Uh, while Wonder was away, we played, we qualified for the Africa Cup of Nations. I mean, play, played games. We were beating Cape Verde 7-2 on aggregate or 7-3. I mean, that was most of the players were from here uh, because some of the senior players were not around. And of course, when they had to also Ethiopia, uh, the first leg of the Olympic qualifiers, it was a draw away in Addis Ababa. And then they came to Abuja, of course, it was 4-1. And that's how the Super Falcons are here, where they will be facing Cameroon in 2012. In 2012, in 2012, it was Cameroon that stopped Nigeria from going to the Olympics, London 2012. They couldn't qualify. It ended on penalties. And now Cameroon is a hurdle again before the final stage. And Randy Wardrum, he's back. He was given a one-year contract extension. And so we we'll continue what we the build up. You know, from the Olympics, nothing has changed. Build up from the World Cup going into the Olympics. Austin, let's listen to the uh, the coach himself first before we go on a break. Well, the goal obviously is to qualify for the Olympics. We we can't look ahead of ourselves as to the success in the Olympics until we get there. So, qualification is going to be uh, the primary goal. Uh, and we got, uh, as everyone knows, we have a very difficult uh, set of matches coming up with Cameroon. Uh, so all the focus now will be on those two matches. If I understand history correctly, I think Cameroon stopped us from going to the Olympics uh, a few years back, maybe 2012, somewhere around there. So um, I think the two countries know each other very well. And they certainly have a lot of talent and they're very, very dangerous, uh, especially in their counter-attacking style of play. Uh, but I really, really like our squad. Uh, I like the team. I like the team chemistry. Uh, we were able to get all of our players back in uh, for these matches, and uh, I think that's very important. So if we can put together our performances like we did um, at the World Cup, then I really like our chances. We need to carry on from what we did at the World Cup and build on it and even even be better you know the difficult part for these matches or any of our upcoming matches is that the window of time uh the international break doesn't give you a lot of training time so we're going to have to rely a lot on our experience at the world cup to take us through especially this first match at cameroon before we really get a few really good days of training before the second match so we have 19 players in camp currently of the 21 invited by coach Randy Wardrum. The other two, one we joined tonight and the other one will arrive, will arrive uh, early hours of uh, tomorrow before the Super Falcons will leave for Douala uh, where they will be playing the game on Friday. Wednesday night, yes, that's when we fly from Abuja straight to Douala for that one. Now, uh, we know Kano is scheduled to arrive tonight. Payne will be the one arriving uh, tomorrow morning. Yeah literally a full house. You just have two players left to arise. They arrived. Now, it's the Olympics. We haven't been there. Yeah. 16 years, right? 2012, yeah. uh, 2016, wow. and 2020. Rio. Yeah. No Rio, no London, no Tokyo. That's, so that's, now, Paris is just here. It, it felt like we've been off um, you know, the <laughs> big stage for a long while. Yes, uh, thank God we've been able to uh, you know, be at the World Cup. But 
after the World Cup, the Olympics is uh, yeah, a massive next. tournament. And we need to assert ourselves, especially uh, the crop that we have now. We do not just have a squad. We mm. have a massively talented squad. And gone are those days. Uh, 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 Florence Omagbe me mentioned that. He said, see, nobody can scare the Super Falcons now. They are pretty exposed. All of the players are playing ladies that they know like every day. They play together in France, yeah. in Germany, in England, in Spain, and all of that. So the exposure, the experience is there. And that is what, you know, any manager, uh, you know, would die to have right now. So yeah. he's having a squad that is super talented. All you need to do, tactical ingeniousness, add it to the team, set them up right, and they will, do the, they will do the job. But, you know, when you're playing your brother, your sister, it's always a crazy thing. Sometimes the qualifiers, <laughs> you know, seem harder <laughs> than the competition itself, so, where yeah. you're looking at teams that almost stopped you or stopped you. Uh, you know, you're, you're looking at, if we had met at the world stage, I'll be schooling you. But they are your, uh, you know, <laughs> your, uh, 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 relation right here. So Cameroon, we know each other, whichever level, whether it is babies, you know, <laughs> yeah. playing with each other, it's always crazy. And like you said, 2012, they stopped us. I think that pain is still deep in there because we've not gone to another Olympics since then. So we need to... Uh, the I'm not saying... was to 2020, exactly, 2008. <laughs> exactly. So uh, I'm not saying, you know, you should have the mind of revenge. Sometimes that could also hurt you. Yeah. But we're still paying. I want to, you know, uh, uh, climb through, uh, climb over Cameroon to be at these Olympics. And if there is any uh, time that is sweet enough, better enough to do it, I think it's now. With Chiamaka in Adoze and Gopos and all other names, you know, uh, outfit players. I think this is the time. We, we, we should get it all right at, at this time. I, I have uh, absolute confidence in this team. I'm not saying anything can happen, but I have a strong conviction they will do it. Mm, a strong conviction. Also, I'm convinced that we can do it because the last two times we didn't qualify, there was no continuity with the team. After the World Cup, the coach was asked to go and someone will have to step in, prepare the players on that one week or two weeks or even sometimes days and then you go play Olympic qualifiers and will not be able to qualify. That has happened in the last two editions. But this time around, yes, the coach who continued at the World Cup with the key players Almost is also around. No. And even Justin Madogo also with the team. He was yeah. the one that was in charge while Wardron was away. Yeah. Nothing has changed. Austin, you listen to Randy Wardron. He mentioned something about the Falcons not always having time. They come together under maybe just one training session. And the next thing, they are flying out of the country. They are playing. They are coming back and they are playing games again. You think this is also like something that they have been affecting the team for a while now. That's why the last game they played, I was happy when they called the players at home, come play this game. And you saw how these girls are played. That's right, you know, because you need to keep that, that blend going. You need to keep whatever style you're building going. You need to also keep the momentum going, team spirits, build bonding and all of that. Very, very important. So I think with this fixture against Cameroon, it has to do more with their mentality, Cecilia. Um, the fact that they've not qualified for the Olympics is one that they need to keep, but try not to make that put them under pressure. But with Cameroon, I said on this show last week that we, we, with women football, come in Africa, Cameroon has said to themselves, for us to get prominence, for us to be respected, to have relevance, we must beat Nigeria or South Africa. And that's what makes this rivalry a very fierce one, you know. So I just hope that the Super Falcons will do just enough uh, in training before that game, try not to put themselves under any form of pressure, uh, avoid making errors. Uh, if that game wants to go so bad, let it just end in a draw and then they wrap it up uh, in Nigeria. Uh, it's difficult to, to make that analysis, you know, that it's, in 2022, in 2012, that the Super Falcons last qualified for the Olympics for a team with all of the stature and and respect that they command in Africa, uh, it's 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 really a tough one to take. So yes, I agree with Randy Wardrum, but then that's not an excuse, Cecilia, because <laughs> these ladies are top professionals. They yes. play top football in their clubs. They understand the assignment. They know what it means whenever they get on the pitch to get the job done. And I think we've, with what we've built from the World Cup to this encounter, I think they've been around themselves just enough to get that job done. Yeah, the fact that nothing has really changed. And of course, we still yeah. have the components of all the players. And I love the fact that said all the players are here, and which is really key. When you have the top stars, everyone, as he said, and likes, they're all in camp. So the coach, I mean, he's got a lot. 
a lot on his plate. Not so much because you, when you have talent, sometimes you, you're, you're, how do I put it now? You've got the headache of who is to start. But that's but a he's good got, Yeah, a very good one, that's right? That's a good But he's always got his, uh, he's got his first 11 most times. Can uh -huh. literally say these are the players that could start for the Super Four Cons. That consistency yeah. is something I'm really happy about what exactly. he's been able to do in that And aspect. the coach showed us at the World Cup that he's now even knowing these ladies more. More, he's yeah. He's knowing these women, uh, you know, even more. The synergy, which player complements which player so well. So I want to see that continue. Yeah, that's what we want to see uh, continue. Well, the Falcons, of course, wishing them all the best as best as they'll be flying out of the country uh, Wednesday night wow. at a face a Cameroon which is the first leg encounter of the Olympic qualifying series. After this, if you're able to beat Cameroon over two legs, or maybe one leg, of, or just a victory, there's another one waiting on the wings. It's not over yet. So the Olympic <laughs> qualifiers continues. All right. I talked, uh, I talked earlier that uh, the Nigerian Women's Football League uh, Premiership, of course, is back. Match Day 9 will be getting our attention uh, tonight. Let's take a look at the games for the uh, Wednesday uh, midweek games. And, of course, uh, two games are in Lagos. When I mean two games are in Lagos, Onikon Stadium will be busy from 2 p.m. Uh, tomorrow. And then this is what we have uh, Wednesday's fixtures of match day night from Nigeria uh, Premier Football uh, League. Uh, Nassau Amazons and Nigeria Hotels will be in action. Dana's Ladies will be hosting uh, Confluence Queens in Lagos. That's at 4 p.m. Adamawa Queens and Abia Angels will also be in action. Royal Queens and Heartland will also be in action. Remember, Heartland are top in the group. Interesting. And you ask... The men, where are they? Okay, I think they are 20, 20, um, 18, yeah, 20 games and 21 points. Yes, that's what Heartland uh, is like, talking about the men. Now, let's go to uh, the other group, group B. Uh, FC Robo Queens will, will be up against Edo Queens. They'll be hosting them at 2 p.m. in Lagos at Onico. Uh, Delta Queens hosting Ekiti Queens. And, of course, Bayesa Queens up against Sunshine Queens. Rivers uh, Angels will be up against Remo Stars. Uh, ladies. Now, Rivers Angels, the game against FC Robo, it was a draw. I think maybe they will try as much as possible to see how they can, you know, get something out of this one, especially after that draw against uh, FC Robo right there in Port Harcourt. Yeah, and um, uh, I, you know, Group B has served us a lot of drama yes. already. I want to see the drama continue. <laughs> FC Robo, Edo Queens uh, will definitely get attention. But I'm looking at Delta Queens versus AKT. Rivers Queens versus Remo Stars Queens. Uh, this is the battle of uh, the very experienced, the very, uh, you know, uh, 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 very good teams against, the, you know, the newcomers. I want to see how uh, they continue to, to, you know, push the hard uh, Remo Stars and also Ikiti Queens. I want to see how well they can handle themselves. But for Delta Queens, uh, I think this is a season they need to continue being careful. Uh, you know, the names do not uh, get your points. Is whatever the name does on match day that gets your points. So I want to see what Group B will bring. Yes, no disrespect to Group A, but you can see these names. Robo Queens, Edo Queens, Delta Queens, uh, Rivers uh, Queens, and then, uh, you know, Biosa Queens. These are uh, season names in the NWFL. And that's why we talk about Group B a lot. But in Group B, uh, definitely uh, Nassau Amazons versus uh, Niger Rattles. Mm -hmm. uh, because I love Onome maybe so well. There is always something to... Onome uh, has uh, left yeah. Niger Rattles. Uh, exactly. You know, exactly. Well. Uh, you know, she, she, <laughs> she had a stint there. So yeah. uh, she has even, you know, uh, increased that interest uh, yeah. for me. So I, I would love to see that game. Also, Nassau Amazons on their day uh, will play good football in, in that um, uh, when it comes to the Women's League. So, uh, you know, a lot of football matches uh, to follow if you're a football lover when it comes to women's football. Yeah, lots and lots across the country at uh, different centers. Uh, actions will be taking place. Austin, I mean, yes, I, I know you saw the pictures uh, coming from the game between Rivers Angels and, of course, FC Robo right there in Port Harcourt. Now, that is a professional team. And we talk about infrastructure. I know that is where you always come in. I mean, infrastructure. Rivers, you know, Rivers, Rivers State, they've got the money. Mm. I mean, it, yeah. it's not one of those states you say, oh, uh, one of those poor states in Nigeria. Yeah. Now, this is a field, right? Where we're playing a professional football. I mean, it's... I don't get it. It was a beautiful game. Yeah. It was, I mean, the ladies, yeah. I, they, they acted as if the pitch was lost. Was, was the way the ball yeah. was flowing, yeah. the goals they scored, everything was on point. It was perfect. I mean, how do you... How do they play 
week in, week out. They're having another game again. At On this same, same uh, at the, at the, at this same stadium. <laughs> <laughs> you, see, you know, each time we come talk about these things, it's, it's tiring. You know, just just look at those those dashboards. Just look at how it looks like one principal cup games. And you and I, we do all we can, you know, to to talk about the league, promotes the league, the leadership, administration. They need to understand these things. That I keep saying it that. 10% is getting on the pitch to play. 90% of the work is done before the action, you know? And if you check, this, this sort of game would have probably given us more beautiful football yes. if this pitch was fantastic, if, mm -hmm. if the right things were in place. And as you said, Rivers, River State government, they can do better than this, you know? But then again, I want to call out the management of the Nigerian Women's Football League. It's time to show leadership yes. also. You do not approve these sort of That's venues all. to play games because you're not you're not helping the mm -hmm. branding of the league. That's all. We've said it over and over again that for our league football to be admirable, if you're doing ten for the men, you must do twenty for women. You know, so I don't know how we just take our eyes off and just do these things and hope that oh, everybody will come and key into our football. Tell me how a, a prospective sponsor will come and put money into this sort of league. These things, you know, the media will be there. Television, we put it out there. And this is what you can give the world to see about women's football. Asisa Toshola played for Rivers Angels. Top women's footballers in the country have passed through Rivers Angels. Is this what to show <laughs> about the legacy of such a club? Is this what to let the world see that this is where you have produced world-class talent? It's, it's heartbreaking, you know. It's sad, Cecilia. I really don't know when this... When this we, we stop, yeah. it is torture to those who are actually trying so hard to develop women's football in Nigeria. I, I really don't know when we're going to just try to see that. Look, sometimes it's not about just getting it done. It is doing it yeah. the right way, doing it properly, professionally, to international standards so that people respect you and find ways to do business with you. Yeah, that's it. I mean, tomorrow we're going to be seeing lost pitches tomorrow uh, in the sense <laughs> that in, in Lagos here, yeah, I mean, the Nikon Stadium, Mombalaji Johnson Arena is a lost pitch. Of course, you go to uh, Samuel Lugbemudia Stadium in Benin City where Edo Queens are playing, you see beautiful pitches. Of course, Remo Stars ladies also, same thing. You see, you know, beautiful pitches. Yes, we have some of the pitches around, you know, across the stadium. Some of them are good. But then when you see it, one like this, and you start asking questions, why would this be approved? If Rivers Angels were asked not to play on this field and they don't have a better stadium to play, and then them go play in New York, I'm sure after spending money two, three times traveling across states, maybe the state would say, you know what, let's just, you know, keep this thing going. All they need to do is just regress. Not much it's money. simple. Regress and then water it. And then that's it. Maintenance. Maintenance. It's, Key. It's it's not it's not so much not so much. and rivers I, angels take a look at group b they're topping after eight games they're on 15 points followed by biasa queens edo queens fc robo and just like that it's and then this is where they're playing their home matches when when you get into an office yeah and this is your job i wonder how some people feel when they don't get the job done because what was seen is somebody's responsibility or some people's responsibility, the infrastructure of that team. And then when you sit in your house or you are at the stadium, you're watching this. How do you feel deep inside of you that this is my res or this is my team's responsibility? And we're making these ladies play on a tough yeah. like this. It's sad, really. Yeah, and there's a sad yeah. one. Well, uh, so many games to look forward to. So whatever stadium that's close to you, just go there and support the ladies. Play their game. It's match day nine. So it's getting closer we'll to the Super Six. <laughs> to, all right. Let's talk about the MPFL now. I mean, it's match day 20. I mean, so many games have been played already. And when you look at the table where you have Remo Stars still at the top of the table, you have to ask questions. Well, let's just refresh your mind of what happened at the weekend. Take a look at the games that happened at the weekend. Sporting Lagos in Lagos here uh, defeated Ben Insurance by a lone goal and that also took them out of where they are uh, to above relegation uh, zone. Enugu Rangers were able to nip Aqua United at home. Baeza 
United and Gombe. It was 2-0 in favor of the home team. Sunshine Stars had to share the spoils with Kwa United and Plato United against Lobby Stars. This game was a crack. It ended 2-1 in favor, of course, of the home team. Let's take a look at other games decided no. in the Nigeria uh, professional football league. Other games that were decided. Uh, Sunday matches, yes, precisely. We can go over to that one quickly. Uh, we'll just see some of those other games that were played. Some of these teams that were in action. But then, uh, let me come to you quickly, um, Kende. I mean, yes, I know the game you want to talk about will be Ben Insurance or Sporting Lagos because that game was in Lagos. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just a quick one. For, for so many reasons. Yeah. Um, I don't know how Lagos will survive watching Sporting Lagos go down again. I don't know. Uh, it was a very hard one to uh, to chew when you know MFM and all of that. And the moment Sporting Lagos got promoted, it was it was a huge celebration uh, that you know the football club football uh, returns to uh, Lagos. And then the struggle they started so well. First seven games there about was so nice. Uh, we thought okay they are going to push on like that. Yeah. And then the MPFL jammed them. Yes, when yeah. the Empire forgets you. They're, they're new. <laughs> they're new boys. And then, welcome to the club. <laughs> welcome to, to the league, you know. Uh, and now, uh, I think the, the primary objective is yeah. survive this season. And then you take your lessons from the first season into the second season and be a better team. So, beating Bendel Insurance, see, one of the hardest teams to get three points off yeah. in the MPFL today is Bendel Insurance home or away. Bendel Insurance can be frustrating for any team. And I think they love it's a, clean sheets. Yes, they love clean sheets. <laughs> <laughs> or, or at the worst, if you score, then yeah. I'll get a draw. a draw. That means I'll score. But for them to get all three points, I think they should build on this. And um, for Enugu Rangers, uh, yes, the season has been topsy-turvy and they are playing a team that uh, I don't know. I don't know what to say about Aqua United. Okay, I'll well, leave it. We'll There's leave somebody it on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> well, place. For Plate United versus Lobby. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's, a, it's another good game. Yeah. Uh, all respect to Plate United. As much as I've got huge uh, lookout and respect for Lobby, I think Plate United deserves all our respect. Yeah, all the games also. You have uh, Rivers United yeah. uh, getting a 3 2 over, over Doma United. Also, you have Abia Warriors and Remo Stars. That ended goalless, no goals in that game. Abia Warriors, um, uh, Casina United and Niger Tunnels, Casina winning by a lone goal. Uh, you also have a Heartland and Canopillas sharing the spoils. And then Aimba and 3SC, that ended in favor of Aimba. Just one goal, and that was what made the difference. Austin, I mean, it, um, <laughs> Ken, they said, there's someone that won't talk about Aqua United. Yes, their position is 16th. So they went to Enugu, they couldn't get any points at all. I mean, Rangers were ready, because Rangers are up there, 7th, trying to see how they can get a continental ticket. But I think what Aqua United are battling is how to actually avoid the drop. I know just 21 points from, from 20 matches, really disappointing. And, and all is credited to that terrible start uh, mm -hmm. at, at, the, at the commencement of the league. But you see, Aqua United, I think it's a mental shift. Right after they won the league and they lost almost, almost 90, 95% yeah. of the team mm -hmm. that won the league, I knew it was going to be difficult building a game okay. from scratch, you know. So... Uh, I, I, it, it's up to the administrators. I think they still have good players yeah. who can get the job done. But but now they we only just do just enough to survive. I think they are, they are in the same realm with Sports in Lagos. Mm -hmm. Try to keep MPFL status because there's nothing they can really do at the moment. But I just want to give a big shout out to some of the teams that went away and didn't get yeah. defeats. Remo Stars knew that they just need to go to Abia Warriors and don't lose. And that game ended goalless. One team I respect a lot. People don't talk much about them, but I do. Quara United. And they went to Sunshine Stars and that game ended 1-1. And then Kano Pillars. If you look at Kano Pillars yeah. this season, there are some grounds they go to. They just know that yeah. you, you will not beat them just so they can, you know, keep their relevance okay. on the league table going. I talked about Play 2 United uh, last week. I was yeah. telling Yemi that that's a team that when they need to win, particularly against teams that have been doing so well, they win. Go look at them. And against Lobby Stars, I knew they would do just enough to get a job done. And they did. And what has that done to play to United? It has shut them to fuck okay. on the log. So that's one team we should look at closely because All now right. they are first on the log with 34 points. Aimba are third on the log with 35 points. 
aimed by also knowing how to get all those one zero wins, two one, they go away, play goalless yeah. or pick mm-hmm. a one one draw. Yeah. Now, aimed by their third on the log, uh, and now Remo stars will understand that hmm, the big boys are climbing, so they cannot afford to, to drop. Right. Unfortunately, Doma stars okay. they did fight, they did all they could against Rivers. Um, United, but Rivers United needed that game more, and it ended 3-2. All in right. all, we had a beautiful week of football mm-hmm. in Nigeria, and we just hope that we'll continue to see more beautiful league football. Yeah, of course, so many goals. All right, let's quickly go to CAF. I mean, the preliminary round for the 2025 Africa Cup of Nations has been done, so we're still waiting for the big one, but that will be after this round. Somalia and Swatini will be in action, will face each other home and away. South Sumi and Principe and uh, South Sudan will also face uh, each other home and away. Child and Mauritius face home and away. Djibouti and Liberia, the, the ones who qualified from here, the four teams, will now join the main draw for the 2025 Africa Cup of Nations. Of course, Morocco is hosting and CAF is proposing between July and August. Now, let me quickly throw this one up before we... I, I mean, Austin, you need 30 seconds to wrap this up. CAF, I yeah. mean, the date... We don't even really understand. Euros, World Cup, you know that it's between, you know, July, August, uh, Olympics and everything. But the Nations Cup, it could be in January, February or August, July, August or June, July. I don't, I don't get it. Can't they just have a stand like, okay, January, February, why the North different and the South different? What's happening? I know, you know, Cecilia, you're very correct. CAF needs to come out and... And have a stance and, you know, be consistent with what they're doing with their tournament. I know easily they will blame COVID. That COVID brought a lot of disruptions. And that's why we are where we are. But then again, Cecilia, I always say this. If there are commercial benefits to it, I think we should just do all we can to support CAF and see ways. Because CAF needs to generate yeah. more revenue to develop football in Africa. When the World Cup was going to be played uh, in December in Qatar, every Everybody, oh, one kind of world, we're not going to have a summer World Cup. The World Cup in Qatar made arguably the biggest revenues. We saw beautiful football, and okay. people are still talking about it. All right. But yes, I agree with you. There should be clarity. Perhaps should have a stance on when they were doing this tournament just so people can actually follow properly. Yeah, I agree. Okay, quickly, quick uh, one. I think uh, it's time. Uh, uh, I, yeah, don't care, to... I, I don't care when the Nations Cup is played. Just make it beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's time for us I to go. Do we have time to run through the Champions League? No. Austin, update from the Champions League or uh, English League, Man City, Brentford. What's going on before we leave? <laughs> Brentford doing just enough at the Etihad Stadium, Cecilia. It's still Manchester City 0, Brentford 0. So let's see how far they can go in that one. All the best to Super Eagles player, Frank Wieka, that's the show in London. I'm Austin O'Connor. In everything you do, remember, let's keep talking sports. Bye for now. Thank you so much, Candy, for doing this. <laughs> it's so lovely to be back, and um, I can't wait to have another. Thank you so much. All right, all the best to Victor Sim. Of course, he returns to training with Napoli. They have a new coach, remember? And they will be in action against Barcelona. That's baptism of fire. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Cecilia Mogbe. Have a good night. Man.